This session is uh, self-care for a single uh, survivor with uh, Scott Fowler. Uh, he was raised in New Mexico and received his master's degree in counseling and educational psychology in 1993. He has worked in the counseling social services field with Head Start as a community mental health counselor in Roswell, college career counselor at NMSU, Alamogordo, geriatric counselor in Las Cruces at the MMC Heritage Program, and currently works with cancer patients as the oncology services coordinator at the MMC Cancer Center in Las Cruces. Scott has worked in cancer services for the past 12 years and is a member of the New Mexico Counseling Association and the Affiliated Association for Spiritual and Religious Values in Counseling. In the past, he has participated in community and statewide cancer services support organizations like the New Mexico Patient Navigation Network, Cancer Support Now, and Cowboys for Cancer Research. Welcome, Scott. Thank you. Thank you, folks, for having me. And uh, I, um, I, I truly hope that that I can give you something in this presentation that you can take take with you. But as Kathy said, the title is Self Care for Single Survivors, and I really want to concentrate on you being able to come out with something that that helps you. You know, I when I think about um, uh, survival. I look at uh, sometimes I watch these survival shows and I and and in listening to some of the survivalist experts, they'll talk about finding something that that works for you and having tools that work for you. You know, we all have tools. We have tools that we can gather. We have tools within within us. And so what I'd like you to do is think about how this can apply to you. And I'm, you know, I'm not going to say anything earth shattering here, but I am going to hopefully remind you of some things that you can use within your own life and your, in your battle. And even though you're single, you're not going at this by yourself. You, you have a lot of support. I think Cancer Services of New Mexico does a good job trying to support cancer patients and survivors in this state. And remember, you're a survivor from the moment you're diagnosed. Okay, so let's go ahead and start. Next slide, please. Okay, so I want y'all to think about your own survival kit. You know, what, what is it that you can use in, in your survival kit? And I want you to think about these things. Remember, you are the priority. We want to avoid isolation. We want to pay attention to our self-talk. Um, we, we want to uh, use emotional self-care. There we go. There we go. Okay. And um, the we also need to think about, you know, this is something that, that people have talked about how important this is, and that's the meaning of life and the purpose your spiritual uh, uh, life. I'm not talking religious. I'm talking about spiritual. And what are the things, what's your umbrella that keeps you going? Dealing with outside pressures and, and the focus. Um, managing our finances. Finding energy and motivation. And, and one of the things I should point out is when I did this live one time, I, I polled people. And this is why I start the presentation with it. Um, these are the things that they that they were looking at that we need to think about. Um, not being isolated, priority, our, our self-care, the, the meaning of life, um, dealing with finances. These are the things that, that are important and they brought it up themselves. So actually survivors brought these things up. Next slide, please. This, this really is going to look at you. And I want you to think about, I hope you all have pencil and paper to, to um, jot some things down. When I do this in person, I hand out a handout that has these slides on it. And you'll get a copy of these slides. Uh, they'll be available if you want, want to use them. But I want you to think about your strengths, okay? All of you have strengths inside that have, have, have helped you through other, other things in life. 
And sometimes you have to pull those things out. Um, also, self-appreciation. Um, you want to think about why you appreciate yourself. You know, you've all uh, told other people, I'm sure, why you appreciate them, your spouse, your family. Think about why you appreciate yourself, okay? We'll come back to the image because I think that's important. Okay, you want to think about your hobbies or interests, okay? Again, these are tools that you can use to help yourself through these things. Some of the hobbies and interests that you've been engaged in, you may not be able to do some of those right now, but still some of them you might be able to. Next slide, please. And one of the things that we always encourage our people at our cancer center is to keep moving, stay physical as much as possible. And I think that's, that's important as well. Okay, next slide. And then lastly, look at your motivation, uh, your, your, as I talked about, your purpose or spiritual focus and what that looks like for you. Okay, next slide. Okay, now that was an overview. What I just shared, th those were the things that I want you to come out of here with um, and jotting some down. Um, later on, when you get the PowerPoint, you may want to go back and jot some down, but I want you to try to come out of out of uh, this with some tools you can use. Okay, so in our survivor's kit, one of the things we wanna do, we never wanna forget about what's inside of us. And that's why I mean by reach in. And so we're gonna have to pull some things out. This isn't your first rodeo, folks. You've had other tough things you've dealt with. Sometimes we need to dust them off and pull them out. Um, we wanna, uh, reach around ourselves and take advantage of resources that are just maybe we've forgotten about, but they're just right there around us. And then we want to reach out. We want to reach out. And sometimes we have to do that, even if it's hard. But remember, you're not alone. Okay, next slide, please. Okay, so reaching within yourself, what does that look like? Okay, um, if you think about self-support. You know, when it really comes down to it, folks, you can count on others, but really you have to count on yourself for, for a lot of things. So you've got to build yourself up. And so that's what I mean by self-support. You're the one that you can you can count on. Start where you are is the slide, uh, the, the graphic says on here. And we're going to talk about self-talk, but saying to yourself, I can, not I can't. Okay, one of the things we start with is, is our self-appreciation, okay? And, and you, you kind of have to take an inventory of, of the things that you've been through and uh, you look at your past and present and you have to think about, you know, what have I been through? How have I learned to appreciate myself? No one knows you better than you, right? And so you have to think about those things. You have to think about yeah moments, what have I gone through in life where I've, I've had a light bulb experience where I've said, you know what? Wow. I did better than I thought I would are, man, I, I, that, that's really going to help that now that I see that I can do that. And perseverance, perseverance is very important. This too shall pass. So all those things you've showed imagery, the next one, OK, now I brought this up before. I'm going to talk about it again. I had a patient uh, in the past that I um, introduced to her the concept of survivor. And she said, you know, Scott, I don't really like that word. I like I want to be a warrior. And I said, OK, let's do this. And after this, I've I've adopted this. And I talk to people about this all the time. What is an image that you can adopt for your own? Um, think about a, a cartoon character you like or a superhero. And hey, this is not just for kids. This is for all of us. What is a hero of yours? What's somebody that you would like to model yourself after? And I, and I want you to use that. And when you're going through tough times, think about that image. Really try to, 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 to use that. Okay, next slide, please. Okay, so... 
your self strengths and your traits, when you reach in, think about what you've learned and developed in you. Okay. And, you know, it may be the perseverance. It may be you've learned that, that, you know, you are pretty strong, um, that you can, you can really be patient and, and cope with a lot of things. You need to think about those things because those are the things you can pull out and use. Okay. Next slide. And another part of reach in, which I think is huge, you know, being a counselor, I, uh, I'm a, a cognitive counselor. And so I think we got to change our thinking. And one of these things, I think in going through cancer, it helps to be thinking right. Okay. So power thoughts, warm fuzzies, what are the things that you say to yourself, the self statements that are power thoughts, your power thoughts, you know, I'm a good person. I'm a tough person. You know, I, I, I can get through this. So self-empowerment is a huge thing. So I ask people in my sessions with folks many times is come up with five self-statements you can use, you know, come up with some things that, that you can tell yourself and maybe put them up on the mural, put them up somewhere where you'll see them. Um, and, you know, in, when you reach in, you, of course, incorporate the spiritual, you incorporate your goals. Goals are very important. What you want to accomplish, how, what goal is going to help you get through this and help you survive. Okay, next slide. One of the things in our self-talk that I think is really important is avoiding the three Ds. Devastating, denigration, and demandingness. So, you know, we want to avoid looking at, at this as a devastation. It, it, you know, life is tough enough without cancer. And, you, you, you know, I've talked to several people that they, you know, they come into retirement and they're ready to go out and enjoy retirement and boom, you know, they, they, they come down with cancer. Um, and so they, they, they look at it as devastating. Well, it's not good. It's not, it's, it's not what we want, but it's not devastating. It's, it's, and it really helps to not to, to alter your thoughts the way you look at it. Another word is denigration. I see this a lot too. And that's where people put themselves down and they blame themselves. They, they, gosh, what did I do to, 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 to get this cancer? What did I do to deserve this? And, you know, in, in, in a lot of uh, cases, um, there's nothing you did to, to, to uh, contribute to this. And even if say you were a smoker and you came down with lung cancer, well, it, it, it uh, doesn't make any sense to keep kicking yourself. This is where we are and we need to go forward and we need to, you deserve good things and you have to put that behind you. Um, I had a friend uh, that in college one time he dislocated his knee and he could actually kick himself in the butt. And it was so fun, to, funny to watch because he would tell people and he wasn't a psychologist, but he'd tell people, this is what you're doing is you're kicking yourself. So you, we want to avoid that. What you have to do is when you have those thoughts of devastation, denigration and demanding this, which I'm going to talk about in a minute, you want to try to change your thoughts and stop those thoughts visualize a stop sign um, in your, your mind yell stop and change your thinking demanding this is another thing we do you know man this is not fair um, this this has to be different this shouldn't have happened you know um, uh, some people say we should all over ourselves right we say we should have done this we should have done that are we we demand we must do this and must do that and and so we, we take, uh, we say life should be fair. Well, we all know it's not. And we have to just put in a, uh, a, a thought that's going to help us, not a thought that's going to throw us back or throw us into depression. Okay, next slide, please. Okay, so now the second thing we did, we, we, were, we reached into ourselves, then we have to reach around. We have to look around and see what activities that we could do, not expensive activities, but activities we could do to manage our stress, 
right? To keep, to keep our mind thinking about other things, because remember folks, your life is not about cancer just because you have it. And sometimes people might say, that's ridiculous, Scott. You know, you, you, I got to go into treatment every day or every week, but you got to remember that your life is not about cancer. So we, we reach around, we look around, we look at our hobbies, our, uh, our purpose, our interest, um, our story, you know, what is it that our life is about? It's not about cancer. It's not about cancer. And so we have to look at things that we can do to manage stress. Next slide, please. Okay. So in, when we talk about reaching around, we want to expand it out, looking at the activities to manage stress. You know, I have things sometimes that I do to help. Um, it seems to be calming. I'll get a cup of coffee or, or a cup of tea are going for a walk would, would be helpful to people. Meditate, prayer, um, yoga, music. There's a lot in, in music therapy. Um, and uh, it, it, it really works for a lot of people. And aromatherapy, y'all have heard about that. You know, you get the, the scents, you get the, um, the incense. Um, that can really help relaxing. Uh, working out, working out in a, you know, in a, uh, something that's not going to wear you out, but, but keeping your body moving. And the key is doing this on a regular basis. Okay. So think about those things. So the, we, we, and looking and reaching around, remember our hobbies. And again, I'm wanting you to think about these things in your own mind, the music you like, do you like to do photography? Do you like modeling, building things? Do you like reading painting, drawing, woodworking, the, the outdoors, you need to try to pick these things up. And in some cases you may say, well, I don't have a lot of interest. And, um, and, and there's other things that with the depression, anxiety, if you're suffering from that, you might talk to your doctor about handling that pharmacologically. Uh, but, but also you need to, to pick up these things that maybe you stopped doing that were so helpful for a while. Okay, next slide, please. Okay, so then we have to, we reached in, we reached around ourselves, things that we could pick up easy that we had done before. Now we need to reach out. Folks, despite if you're, if you're single, which is the title, you, you need to reach around. You're not alone. There's other people, other singles, other people that are going through this that want to support you. And, you know, I think about the song, lean on me when you're not strong, I'll be your friend. I'll help you carry on. Um, you know, there, there are support groups out there. Um, down in my part of the country, we just have one or two support groups. But uh, up here in Albuquerque and in the northern part of the state, you have support groups that will do Zoom a lot of times. Um, I know even the support group that that is in my part of the country, it's run by a cancer survivor. Uh, the other one that's starting is as well, and they they do allow for Zoom as well. So uh, Cancer Support Now, Cancer Services of New Mexico, um, the LEPA program, there's a lot of things out there that can be helpful. Okay, next slide, please. Okay, another part of reaching out, we talked about the support groups. We also talked about, um, or we haven't talked about this yet, but finding a counselor or a therapist. I always think that's important. Uh, and, and, you know, a, a lot of people will come in and, uh, it, you know, into our cancer center and I'll ask them, you know, we'll, 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 we'll broach this, uh, this, this uh, subject and we'll talk about counseling and therapy. And, and I'll say, do you have a, a coach? Do you have a counselor or therapist that you can talk to on a regular basis? And um, that's, a, that's an important part of this. It's not for everybody, but I, I think that it's, it's a, it's a huge resource. It's often not taken advantage of. And so we, we also have the cancer support lines. I spoke of cancer support now, they have the cancer support line. You can see that there at the bottom of the screen. Um, so it's if you can get into a support group, either in person or Zoom, or you can think about getting a counselor or a therapist, 
don't get locked into the thinking of I can do all this on my own. I don't need anybody else. Um, it, it, it's important, folks. Everybody needs somebody sometime, right? Uh, we, we're in this together. Okay, next slide, please. Okay, now, when uh, I talk about some other resources, there's the American Cancer Society, there's Cancer Care, they have a lot of online groups, and there's, uh, the, the, there's the cancer support community that, that I spoke of. You can, you can uh, get on any of these and they're gonna give you some, some options. One of the things that I've recently uh, run into on the, the American Cancer Society website is they talk about a lot of, um, there's actually a really good handout that we give out to all our new patients. And that's where it talks about relaxation, talks about the different kind of relaxation with the muscles, the breathing, the meditation, all that is important. And remember, we're creatures of habit. And so it's just like these things that I've talked about in this, in this session, you, if you make it a habit, it's going to affect your thoughts. It's going to help you change your thoughts. It's going to help you change your actions and your feelings. But we need to start with our thoughts. But we always need to be uh, active. We don't want to be stagnant. Even though I know there's times when you, you feel like not doing anything, but remember in your mind, you still can be active, even when you're, you're resting and not feeling well. Okay, next slide, please. Okay, so in conclusion, folks, I, I, I want you to think about this again. It's, it's all about you as far as getting something out of this. How can you reach in within yourself, pull out some of your strengths, pull out some of the things that helped you in past difficult circumstances? Remember, this is not your first rodeo. And I say that a lot to people, especially those that are older, because they've gone through a lot of tough things. And even the younger people have. Um, so reach in within yourself, pull those things out, reach around. What are the hobbies and interests that you used to do maybe that, that you need to pick up again that can help distract you, that can help you focus on other things, not your cancer. Remember, your life is not about cancer, even if you have it. It's about you and the things that you've worked on. Reach out, reach out to others. We've got to do that. And that's important too. And you know, I, uh, that can you, do we have another slide? Okay. Before I talk about that, I want to, I want to briefly, uh, mention again, the, the spiritual and the purpose. I, you know, I think it's real important folks to think about that and think about your life and, and what your overall, overall purpose is, what you feel like your purpose is in life. And it, during these times when you're going through really difficult things, that's that's huge. And, you know, we always need to keep that in mind, but sometimes we forget about that. And whatever your your spiritual or focus is, you, you need you need to think a little bit about that. And you need to um, I find that when I do these in person, that that the the things that people talk about a lot hit on the spiritual, they hit on the, the things that are, that really matter to them, the purpose. And we need to think about that when we're trying to develop our own survival kit. Now, this slide here, this just gives you uh, uh, my information um, that we're, maybe you can call me uh, if you, if you have any questions, um, I, I can certainly uh, pass on information. There's my email, there's my cell phone number. Um, and, and, uh, I, and even if I'm not, I don't work with you, you're not at our cancer center, I, I still am very happy to pass on information because, you know, one of my purposes is to help people. That's why I'm a counselor and to, to uh, just help as many folks as I can, do all the good I can in every way that I can. And uh, so, you know, that's, that's what I, what I am here to do. So please, if you uh, think that I can help you, or if you have questions, please feel free to reach out.
great. There's a question in the Q&A, Paul. I have lost my purpose. How do I find it again? Well, I, 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 that's a, that's a really good question, a really important one. And I think, I think you need to, to look at what it was. I, I assume that you, you saying that you've lost it, that you felt like you had one. And so what, and everybody has one and, and what you have to do is explore what it used to be. And then, and then is that something you want to change or do you want to get back to that and, and ask yourself, how am I going to do that? You know, how am I going to, to get back and find that purpose? Because I want to encourage you, you have a purpose and, and, and our, you know, I used to be a career counselor. And one of the things I would say with people is there's a career for you. And for all of us, we just have to find it. Well, you have a purpose. You just have to find it. And, and, you know, you're here for a reason. And, um, and, you know, I'm sorry that, that, that you're having to fight this battle, but, but there's a purpose there and that can help you get through. And that, that would be something too, that I would suggest talking to a therapist about that, because that's very integral, very important. I'm glad you brought it up. Um, uh, you, you know, you can also reach out to me, um, and uh, but that's that's something that I've worked on with people individually. All right, we have another. Do you know of any resources for cancer survivors who are single due to losing their spouse? I was bereaved less than two weeks before the cancer diagnosis. Oh, my goodness. My goodness. Um, that the. You know, I would, what I would do is I would reach out to um, like a lot of the, the hospice organizations. Um, they, they have grief community centers and um, they, they will do grief support outside of, uh, uh, outside of just folks that were in hospice, but they will do, they will actually go out to the community. There's counselors that, uh, that, that specialize in grief as well. I would recommend really uh, going, going and getting hooked up with a, with a therapist, with a counselor, and then also seeing if there's a grief support. I know in the Albuquerque Santa Fe area, you're going to be, you're going to find resources a lot easier. If you're, excuse me, if you're down in Las Cruces, I know we're, we've been invited to um, participate in resources in El Paso, um, which is a much larger city. Um, and But it's tougher if you're like in the Eastern or the Western part of the state, but that would be something that that I think I would start with, with, with finding a, um, a therapist and then seeing if they could get you hooked up again. It's, it depends on what part of the state you're in, but I, I reinforce this again, you're not alone. Other people have, have dealt with that as well. And that's, that's almost a double whammy. And I, and I, I, my thoughts and prayers are with you. Um, but you know, you can find you can find help, but I would start with, with maybe looking for a therapist. All right. Thank you. Another question as uh, the caretaker for my husband's illnesses, I find it hard to keep up with my self care. Are there support groups in Las Cruces for us? There, there, I'm not aware of any, any care, caregiver support, except I know that there is one, uh, uh, the, the uh, Southwest, um, desert cancer support group. And I know if Mari's listening or if she, I know I'm not saying the right, the right uh, uh, name, but, but it's uh, there's a group and they, they, the spouses come to that as well as the, the, the patients. And so, patients. And so I know it, I know it, uh, it really uh, helps uh, the caregivers too, to go to that because they meet other caregivers. All right. And uh, next one is how do I begin conversations with my friends? They seem to like they are afraid to talk with me. And, and they're, they're, they're probably afraid. And I, I, 
run into this before where people say, you know, my friends, the people that I thought were my friends, somehow they isolate themselves because themselves because they don't know what to say to me. So they just don't about cancer. So I, I'm, I think that's what you're, you're asking. And I would, I would start by telling them, look, I, I really value your friendship. And I know that maybe you're a little bit weary about talking to me about my, my, my cancer. Um, I would be willing to talk about that, but I really need your support. And, and it's, it's not, uh, you know, cancer is not something that, that you can get by just being next to someone or, but sometimes you, you wouldn't think it'd be this way, but sometimes you have to put them at ease and, and sort of look at the elephant in the room, which is the cancer and bring that up. And then you'll see them relax. And then sometimes it'll, it'll bring things back to the way it used to be because you, you put them at ease. All right. Next question. Yes, there is a lot of grief support. I know that. Good luck finding a counselor available in Albuquerque. Just wondering if you knew of anything specific to both cancer and bereavement. It was a long shot. Didn't really expect that there would be anything. A surprising number of us in the, are in this situation, I found. Thank you for this great presentation. Well, thank you. Thank you. I know, you know, one of the things that, that I, that I uh, suggest to people too, for, uh, you know, the, the, the counseling and bereavement, if you can't find somebody where you are, um, one of the things, and there's such a big, long wait list. One of the things that is, is really, I know there's an outfit out of Las Lunas. Uh, my, one of my colleagues works for them. There's a place called better help now where you, you don't have an in-person counselor or a face-to-face, -face, but you do zoom counseling. And a lot of people, uh, my sister's a, a social worker and she, that's one of the things that she's looking to do. And the reason I bring it up is because you, you can often find someone quicker and someone that fits your, your situation a lot easier that way, rather than just going into an in-person. Um, so look at better help now. And I, I can't remember what the place in Las Lunas is, but if you, but I can, I can actually, if you wanted to, to text me or email me, I could, um, give you some of those places, you know, now I know some people like the face-to-face -face counseling, um, but you're still doing face-to-face. -face. You're just doing zoom. You're not, I guess, in person, you're not in their office, but you you're in their virtual office. And I think that opens the possibilities up. And one of the reasons this has grown, this zoom counseling is because there is such a long wait list. There is a problem finding a counselor that you can go to in, you know, there in your city. All right, thank you. Another question. I seem to want no one around me anymore because they can't understand me. Their problems seem so petty. When I start getting better, will that change? I I, I think it will, but but I think a lot of times people try to relate you'll bring up your problem or maybe they know it's like the elephant in the room. They know what your problem is. And so they try to relate to you by bringing up problems that seem, you know, they won't really relate to you, but again, it's people don't know what to say. And so I, I think it will change, but we go back to what I was talking about with that other uh, individual sometimes you have to address those issues and you have to, um, you know, you, you, they're trying to relate to you, I think, but that's why a support group is so nice because you have the, 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 the cancer um, experience is what you have in common. And if you have someone that hasn't gone through this, they may be trying to relate, but they can't relate. But I think as you, it, it, it the, the fact that you you're going through this, 
you can, even though this is a terrible experience to go through, you can use it to your benefit in relating to other people. Um, you know, it's kind of like making some, making lemons out of lemonade. I mean, making lemonade out of lemons, excuse me. I think that's kind of what that, that is about. I hope that sort of, uh, uh, answers your, 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 your question, but I think it will get better. Um, but you may need to, your friends, you know, kind of, you can deal with the cancer and help them understand it better. Thank you, Scott. Um, one more. It was. Um, it's not a question, just uh, something to let people know, be aware of. Um, not trying to be negative, but I was told by a group a few days ago that BetterHelp is under fire for misusing patients' personal information. Need to be vigilant. Thanks again. Yeah, you're welcome. And thank, thanks for bringing that up because we certainly don't want... Um, people's information to be, um, uh, uh, you know, suspect or anything. So we do have to be vigilant. Thank you. Thank you, uh, participant, for bringing that up. Um, to the individual asking about caregiver support in the state, um, you're, you should be able to see the answer to your question. There is an individual out of Berlin. Uh, her name is Bethany. And uh, the contact information is available there. Uh, it's Bethany Hobbs, Caregiver Nav Navigator at the Family Caregiver Center of New Mexico. Once again, thank you, Scott, for being here today. I appreciate you being available on a Saturday afternoon uh, to present some, such valuable information to everyone. Thank you, Kathy. And if I can just uh, uh, give a well wish to, to all of you out there. And I um, thank you for uh, being in this session. And, uh, you know, my thoughts and prayers are with all of you. And uh, if, if I can do anything, you know, it takes a team and uh, we're, we all work together. I tell the patients all the time, we all work together in a team to help them. Thank you.